Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. I am not late. Don't even try it. I said Wednesdays and Thursdays. I was tired yesterday. That's why I'm here today. But I did make it. All right. I made it on your Thursday. I hope you guys had a wonderful day. Just got in from work and I'm ready to knock out these freaking recaps. So let's go because it's going to get crazy. This episode, I saw the trailer and I'm, I'm still in shock, but let's get to it. Chantel says that the trip to New York was awful. First, she sees the picture of Karima and Pedro on social media for the world to see. Chantel says that Pedro is like a cockroach. <laughs> oh, she says she tries to get rid of him, but she can't. Chantel says that River, who is her brother, for those of you who haven't watched any other season but this one, and she says that River is very protective over her. The family is very close-knit and he is very close to her. So when she needs to talk to somebody, she knows that he's gonna be calm. So that's who she needs to talk to right now. Chantel says that River's relationship with Pedro has been basically downhill since they met. River asks Chantel what has been going on, what's been new. He heard that she was dating. And Chantel says, dating is hard. Chantel goes on to tell River that if she plans on dating an American man, it's going to take him four years to propose. Then it's going to take him three years for them to have a baby or whatever. And Chantel, I'm here to tell you that I know you're formulating this in your mind as if everything's going to be so easy, but you could have very well stayed with Pedro, never got divorced, and y'all could have had fertility problems. I don't think people, like obviously you're not thinking fertility issues because you just don't know. Chantel says that American men take so long to marry. I haven't done any research on this, but from what I can tell, American men take at least four years to get married. And once they do that, you know, by that time I'm gonna be 36. And then maybe wait two, no, three more years before I actually have children. Chantel says that she doesn't see herself getting married anytime soon, so she's thinking about freezing her eggs. River says to Chantel, don't think of life as if you're running out of time. Chantel says that going on her date in New York just reminded her that dating is not easy and that you have to go through a lot of crappy men just to get Mr. Right. Chantel says that it's gonna take a very long time for her to find Mr. Right, and she feels maybe that's why she projected perfection on Pedro because she knew how hard it was. Chantel says that she's taking the thought of freezing her eggs more seriously now. River tells Chantel that she has a family that's there for her, that supports her, no matter what decision she chooses to make. River says that it's very hard for him to see Chantel going through these emotions, especially dealing with something that she doesn't deserve. And then seeing her feel like she has to rush through things, it's not something that he wishes he had to witness. Winter said if he could go back in time, he would stop the marriage and he would hope that Chantel would have saw Pedro for who he was back then. Chantel tells Winter that Obed is coming to visit her. She's anxious to know what he has to tell her because she feels that he wasn't able to say a lot because he didn't want to feel like he was the cause of the divorce. And who Obed is, Obed is a like friend of Nicole, but they had a falling out for like years ago. So now they're not cool. So Chantel says that Obed wants to be there for her now, um, you know, after the divorce is done. I'm really interested in what he has to say now that Pedro and I are divorced. He was friends with that circle yeah. and he has inside information. I'd like to know. Now, what is the point of you hearing what Obed has to say? Girl, this is pointless as your mama talking to freaking Alejandro. Chantel says in the beginning of the relationship with her and Pedro, Obed had a lot to say to her. So why he couldn't say everything then? I mean, I almost said then, then that would have been weird. But why, why couldn't he say everything he needed to say then? I mean, he was already telling you stuff and y'all were married at that point. But anyway, this is what Obed has to say. It was a setup. They arranged Pedro to meet you and you to fall in love with him. So his family. Why? Get him to the United States, get, get him to get a green card. Despite what Obed told Chantel back in 2019, she said love is blind and it'll take hold of your mind. I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, she said she was basically blinded by love. She wanted to believe what Pedro, you know, she wanted to believe that he was truthful. What he said to her was the truth. So Chantel says that Obed wants to be there for her after the divorce. And he, she feels that he has some things to talk to her about that he's been holding on to for a long time. 
I'm so tired of seeing Scott on my screen. I swear I am. Scott says that meeting up with Pedro was a disaster and now he's meeting up with Lydia to let her know what, you know, to let her know what went on and to figure out where they're going to be, like where's their relationship or whatever leading. So Scott tells Lydia via a translator that him and Pedro got into it, even shows his already lumpy, pre-lumpy head. Um, Scott, your head was already lumpy. It was already lumped up. I'm just saying. And Lydia says, well, you know, they're my kids. Okay, they're always going to be my kids. And they're all I have. And, you know, they're always going to want to defend me. And Scott says to her, you don't see anything wrong with the fact that me and Pedro fought. She basically doesn't know if Pedro's defending her honor, like, I don't know, like the TV shows or whatever. And Scott's response to that is this family's dysfunctional, which we already knew, Scott. Thanks for telling us what we already know. And he says, I, I might as well just go along and be dysfunctional with them. He said, they're crazy. Let me just join in there crazy because that's not crazy, guys. That's completely sane how he's thinking. Okay, alrighty then. So basically Scott says that Pedro is gonna learn to love him because I guess they're moving past this little situation. Scott is annoying and manipulative and he's evil and I don't like him with his freaking lion looking face, okay? He's so annoying. He says to Lydia, I think Pedro wants to see us together. Lydia, if you believe any word out of Scott's mouth, in fact, you need to stop letting him in your loins. Is it called loins when it's a woman? I don't know. But <laughs> you need to keep your legs crossed and keep this man away from you, okay? Oh my God, this guy is disgusting. So Scott says that this is the craziest day of his life and right now he's pissed the hell off about what happened between him and Pedro earlier that day. And um, basically he's hell bent on revenge, okay? I'm saying that. And he's basically saying the same thing. I'm just saying it clearer. I really want to pass on what he told Lydia here, but I guess I'm supposed to be recapping the show and in its entirety, right? Ugh. Anyway, I'm sorry, this is painful for me. Scott says to Lydia, why don't we make some bad decisions tonight? You guys know what bad decisions is, okay? Don't make me get clearer. And then tell Pedro about it, okay? And Lydia, you think Scott's joking and you think that he's being endearing. He's being an a-hole. And you're not, like, with the language barrier, you're not even getting that he's being an a-hole. Lydia says that Scott told her that the fight wasn't a big deal, which I don't think he said that. But like I said, there's a language barrier, and that translator is really not helping, okay? So now you're going to go upstairs and have sex with him? Because they agreed to have sex together or whatever. He's like, you want to go upstairs? And she's like, yes, girl. Do not let your, I, I said it last time, do not let your yearning vagina make you let the wrong person in there, okay? Seriously, you're better off yearning than being with this fool. And Lydia says, if we're getting to know each other, it's the right thing to do. And then Scott toasts to Pedro. What a pig. Seriously, Scott is making me want to barf, okay? This is what he says. I'm not repeating it. I'm gonna let him say it. Pedro's gonna be calling me Poppy tomorrow. I'm like, who's your daddy? I'm daddy. Scott says that this is vengeance sex and this one's for you, Pedro. Everybody's just, I want everybody to look at his freaking, look at his freaking ugly face. I'm sorry, I'm calling you ugly because you're ugly inside and out. I have never seen someone so dastardly, I don't know if that's a real word, since Gargamel and the Smurfs. I mean, seriously, disgusting. So we're back after the damn commercial break and Lydia lets us know she spent the night with Scott and I want to say TLC. Is it TLC? It is TLC. TLC. I swear to God. I did not need to hear Scott's lovemaking noises. You're really going to have me nauseous while I'm doing this recap. She says that Scott told her that Pedro assaulted him and she's waiting for him at the house so that she can talk to him about what happened. So Pedro comes and asks and says hello. First of all, Pedro comes, she he says hello and asks, where were you last night? She was at the devil's house last night. Pedro asks, what did Scott tell you? And Lydia said, Scott told her that Pedro assaulted him, said that he hit his head. Pedro says, no, Scott assaulted me. And Lydia says, that's what he told me. 
Lydia, stop being so gullible like a little child. God. And Pedro says, you believe him over me? Pedro says that he's pissed off because his mother believes that guy over him. Pedro says that he believes that Scott didn't tell her what really happened. And he didn't. He lied. He added a lot of bullcrap. He says that he's a very manipulative person, as you can see here. Pedro says that Scott is a trash person. He wants to play with your feelings and he wants to play with your mind. You got that right. So Lydia says we have a serious problem. And Pedro says, so what are we going to do about it? Because you're believing a guy who lies to you over your own son. Lydia says that Pedro is very protective over her, but he doesn't have the right to interfere with their relationship because she gave Scott the opportunity again. And she says, it's just a fight. Girl, that was more than just a fight, okay? And that's not gonna, you'll see. Anyway, I'm watching this show. We'll see what happens later. She says, it's just a fight. It can be resolved. So Pedro says to his mom, do you know what he did? Scott was talking to some girls at the hotel. Pedro says, and he has video. So Pedro shows the video to Lydia, letting her know that he's over here. This happened yesterday. He's flirting with a woman and that, you know, what they're looking at is one of the three ladies that he was flirting with. Pedro says to his mother that every woman that would come to the pool, Scott would go talk to them. And Pedro confirms with her that he asked for their numbers. So what you gonna do, Lydia? Huh? What you gonna do? Tell me you're not gonna stay with this fool. So Lydia calls Scott a scoundrel. Lydia says, is this the behavior of a man who wants a serious relationship? Is this the behavior of an honest man? Ma'am, are you woken up yet? Are you awoke? Are you awakened? I don't know how to say that. Are you, are you up? Have your eyes opened? I hope so, because Scott's a pig and he's using you, girl. Lydia says, no. Is this the behavior of a man that wants to build a home? No. She said, this is a vulgar charlatan and i love the way she said that in spanish girl if i could have said that like you said it in spanish listen i would have everybody here would have laughed at me but i would have did it anyway but i just can't get it out can barely speak english over here goodness but thank you lydia didn't i say he was a pig earlier now you're agreeing with me okay thank you that's what he is and i need you along with this anger and this name calling i need you to actually cut this freaking fool loose and never talk to him again block his number um, block him from your life um, and block him from your vagina, please, for the love of God. Do that first. Do that first. And then block him on every other angle after that. Lydia says that she gave Scott a chance and now she sees that he doesn't deserve it. Lydia is fed the hell up. So Lydia says Scott doesn't deserve any opportunity. And she asks Pedro to send some of those videos to her. She's going to have a little talk with Scott. A talk? I'm going to have a, a little yell. A little, um screaming yelling hollering i'm not gonna have a talk with this fool i'm cursing his behind out that's what i'm doing pedro says get it done and tell him to f off okay lydia says i can't let him get away with it so chantel girl first of all those shoes i'm gonna show y'all her shoes right now hold on a minute look at these freaking shoes in my favorite color that is literally my favorite color pink this meeting really did not need to happen chantel it was not very healing for you to find out that karima and pedro were actually were hooking up and dating in high school why was that even necessary for you to know girl that was the past and even if he lied to you who the hell cares y'all are divorced now but the thing that really upset chantel is the fact that she found out from Obed that he didn't really write his vows. She took and framed these vows because they meant so much to her. And now she realizes she really didn't mean anything to Pedro. So after seeing the video with Scott, with him talking to women, Lydia got very upset. She says that Nicole and Pedro warned her about Scott, told her that he was a womanizer, but now there is video and indisputable evidence. She comes to Scott's hotel room. Why'd you hug him when you knew you were accusing him? Anyway, she gets into, how are you doing? Um, He's dirty, he's a devil, he's a demon. What do you mean, how's he doing, Lydia? Anyway, Lydia tells Scott she has to have a very important conversation with him. And she shows Scott the video and tells him to explain. She's yelling at this point. And Scott says he doesn't care. And uh, it doesn't mean crap to him. And Lydia, you know a lot more English than you're leading on. But I digress, because you, you answered everything he said in English. You answered in Spanish, like without the translator lady. Scott proceeds to call her crazy. She, he proceeds to call everybody in the family crazy. He says that Pedro and Nicole and her are going to be single forever. And Scott, you might as well include yourself in that because you are disgusting and you're going to be single forever. And by the way, there's nothing wrong with being single forever, especially when you have to deal with buttholes like you. I'd rather be single than be with a butthole like you, Scott. So they're going back and forth and Lydia lets him know you're fat, you're ugly, and I don't like you. <laughs> Those are her exact words. 
and Scott comes back at her with, you know, you just lay in bed, you know, you, and I can tell you haven't had sex for 12 years. So anyway, they end this exchange. Lydia says it's over. Adios, bastard. And goodbye. Lydia goes back to the house. Pedro's there and she lets Pedro know everything is over. Scott's a disgusting pig and I never want to see him again. Pedro is elated and he wants his mom to be happy, but she, he says that she's terrible when it comes to dating decisions. But you know what? That's not something easy for a lot of people, okay? Because people, they really put on a mask and you really got to watch them take the mask off and see what's underneath there. Okay, is it Freddy Krueger? Under your mask, is it Freddy Krueger? Because if that's the case, that's terrible. Pedro lets Lydia know that Nicole contacted him and let him know that the family Chantel, or AKA Karen, was trying to talk to Alejandro to get nosy information about them. And Pedro lets us know ever since before the marriage, after the marriage, they're sitting here trying to investigate him. And Lydia is fed up and she's very protective over Pedro, Pedro says, and her and Nicole are going to seek revenge. And I don't know what they're going to do. Well, yes, I do. I saw the trailer, but yeah. Pedro lets Lydia know that Nicole contacted him and let him know that the family Chantel or AKA Karen was trying to talk to Alejandro to get nosy information about them. And Pedro lets us know ever since before the marriage, after the marriage, they're sitting here trying to investigate him. And Lydia is fed up and she's very protective over Pedro, Pedro says, and her and Nicole are going to seek revenge. Nicole said, these people are going to be so effing scared. And Nicole says they deserve it. And Lydia says, of course. So Lydia says when she found out that the family Chantel was trying to investigate Pedro, she had an idea. So Nicole says that it's the first time her and her mom are visiting a voodoo store, a, bot a botanica, because they want some gifts for the family Chantel. Okay, so Nicole tells the voodoo man that they want something special to spook Ramon, the voodoo guy, I don't know what else to call him. They can solve various issues with the botanical solutions, okay? Like, um, you know, evicting tenants. Wait, did you say evicting tenants? Because I got some real bastards set up upstairs. But anyway, I don't do black magic. But anywho, Nicole collects voodoo items, including dolls and a coffin, expressing a desire for peace rather than harm. But your actions are saying something completely different, but <laughs> alrighty then. You you don't wish them harm. You just want them to leave you alone. Alrighty then. Is that why you put those dolls in a coffin? Coffin signifies death, doesn't it? Mm, all right. They're over here, um, Lydia and Nicole, and um, they're writing down the family Chantel's names on this. I'm, assume, I'm assuming that's parchment paper. Don't ask me how I know. They put all this stuff inside of a box and they pay Ramon or whatever and now they're gonna send that box to the family Chantel. Is that even legal? Like, are they allowed to do that legally? Mm, I don't know. They're in the house, the, sh the family Chantel, and Rivers says they got a package, and on the package it says it's from San Santo Domingo. So Karen is over here with her gloves and her spray. She tells Chantel, stop touching that, don't touch that. Chantel stands there and opens the box, and she sees kind of what's in it. Karen says, take that thing outside. So Chantel says that when she opened the box, her jaw hit the floor because it's things that she never saw before. She said that there was some kind of three horn red and white, red and black thing in the box and it looked demonic. And then there was a coffin in there. And she says she knows that that thing came from Pedro's family. So the producer comes out and asks them what's going on. And Chantel tells them they got a package. We just got a package. Come, no, let them let them see. Let them see it first. Let them see what's going on. I'll let you see it first. So we got this package from Santa Domingo, and mm -hmm. it's voodoo in, in there. The package was sitting outside. It, I brought it in, and then it's a bunch of weird in there. Karen says when people are using black magic to curse people, it is very serious. So now they're going to set these things on fire. Send it right back to hell where it came from. Karen says she knows without a doubt that it's something from Pedro's fishy witches which is so stupid but anyway she says that she knows that it's something from pedro's family and they literally set all that stuff on fire which is probably the best solution karen says this is further proof that pedro and his family was doing spell work on chantel karen says they had to have been putting love spells on her for her to sit there and let pedro for seven years tell her that she's not pretty he told her you she wasn't pretty he told her she wasn't pretty they're freaking crazy i hate to agree with scott but no they're freaking crazy Chantel says the audacity of them to send that to my house. They need to get a piece of my mind. I'm going to the DR. Rivers says, I don't think you need to go anywhere, Chantel. 
And I wouldn't want to go anywhere near these crazy people, especially after you sent some voodoo to my house. Why in hell do I need to see you face to face? Chantel, anything you need to say could be done on video chat. I don't understand you, girl. I really don't. Chantel says it's gone too far and they're going to see me in the DR. So Chantel says here that them sending them a box of voodoo was a declaration of war. And River tells her that he thinks it's a terrible idea. Okay. Anyway, Chantel says, I don't care. I'm still going. And girl, I thought you said you treasured his opinion before. Now you don't care all of a sudden. Anyway, Chantel is telling everybody to grab their Bibles, get bathed, sanctified, and holy in the holy in the holy uh, water, because she's going to the DR, and I'm guaranteeing you everybody's going to go with her. Chantel says they can take this voodoo and stick it where the sun doesn't shine, because that crap does not work on our family. And Chantel tells the whole family that they're going. Go pack your bags. I don't know who the hell you think you are telling them what to do, but um, yeah, I guess they're going to listen. Anyway, guys. That is the end of this recap, okay? I don't know why the hell this recap is so damn long, but I'm really sorry. But I love you, but I'm really sorry. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching my channel. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Bye.